Good morning. I'm the Reverend Amy Richter. And I'm the Reverend Joe Pagano. And this is a service of morning prayer for Sunday, November 1st, All Saints Day. Today we thank parishioners Wanda Osmond, Sabrina Short, and Megan King for leading our readings and prayers, and the Wildwood Singers of St. George's Church for leading our music. Thank you for joining us today. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Vanity. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The souls of the righteous. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they seem to be dead. Their departure was taken for defeat. They're going from us to be disaster, but they are in peace. Though they appeared to be punished, their hope is rich in immortality. Small their affliction, great their blessing, God proved and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in a furnace he tried them, and accepted them as an oblation. In the moment of God's coming they shall kindle into flame and run like sparks through the stubble. They shall govern nations and peoples, and the Lord shall be their ruler forever.
steps may roam and forsake not the way of salvation, my boy, that you learn from your mother at home. You leave us to seek your employment, my boy, by the world you have yet to be tried. In temptations and trials you will meet, my boy, may your heart to the Savior confide. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Well, good morning from beautiful Kings Point, Newfoundland. And uh, today um, in my sermon, uh, I'll be talking about All Saints Sunday. Um, a little while ago, uh, someone told me that the more people you know and loved who have uh, passed away, uh, the more real heaven uh, becomes for you. Um, as I've grown older and uh, more and more people uh, near and dear to me who have died, uh, this saying has proved to be true. I would also say as I've grown older and more and more people uh, that I've known and loved have died, uh, the more real the communion of saints has become for me as well. Um, the idea uh, that someday uh, we will be gathered with all the saints uh, around the throne with the Lamb, uh, singing God's glory and praises eternally, um, is a bedrock hope of mine. Um, it is something I long for and hope for. Um, I know I, uh, you know, I, I teach theology, so um, I 
I, part of my job is to teach people the history of way, the, the ways people have understood these promises, the promise of eternal life. Uh, and um, But there are certain parts of um, uh, the Christian faith um, that I'd prefer not to be demystified or explained away. And this is one of them. Uh, the hope that we have that someday we will be uh, reunited with those we love uh, and gathered around the throne uh, with Christ as our shepherd uh, and singing God's praises eternally. Um, in our uh, first lesson for today uh, from the book of Revelation, we get a vision of this. Um, a vision that John, the writer of Revelation, uh, uh, shares with us. Um, he says there were multitudes uh, from every tribe and family and nation and language uh, gathered uh, around the throne uh, and um, the lamb is in the center and they, um, they're dressed in white uh, robes, white robes, which are uh, signs of uh, their right relationship with God and they carry um, palm branches, which is a, a sign of uh, Christ the King uh, and they have this long hymn of praise, amen, blessing and power and glory and honor be to our God uh, forever and ever. It's a wonderful vision. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful hope uh, and it's uh, a wonderful thing to remember on All Saints Day, um, I think. Um, so uh, in this story, um, one of the uh, elders, uh, asks John, uh, who are all these people? <laughs> and uh, John says, they are the people who have come through the great ordeal or the great tribulation. Those are the one, these are the ones whose um, robes have been made white uh, because they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Um, this idea of coming through the great ordeal, uh, the great tribulation, um, it may sound familiar to some of us, uh, especially those of us who pray the Lord's Prayer <laughs> regularly, right? Uh, we say, um, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, right? Or in the contemporary version, um, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, right? Uh, this time of trial, this great tribulation, uh, I think is talking about the same thing. Uh, and so we do pray regularly. Those of us who pray the Lord's Prayer regularly pray that we will be saved from the great tribulation, saved from the time of trial, uh, so that we might be amongst those saints uh, gathered around the throne of Christ uh, in heaven. Um, and notice uh, John also says uh, they, uh, their robes are white because they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. So um, symbolic language, right? The Lamb is Christ. Uh, yeah, but it's easy enough to understand, right? I think uh, it says that the way we get through the Great Tribulation uh, is because of the sacrifice of Christ um, through his death and resurrection. Um, we are saved from the time of trial. We are delivered from evil. Um, and uh, this is, again, something I think that we pray for regularly. Our gospel lesson for today uh, is uh, the Beatitudes from Matthew's gospel. Um, and I find the Beatitudes always very striking on All Saints uh, Sunday. Um, and part of it, I think, is that the Beatitudes have both a present dimension to them and a future hope. Um, the present dimension, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Right now, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, right? Um, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed right now, for they will be comforted. So we see the Beatitudes has this present dimension, but also this future hope. Uh, and as we think about All Saints Day, we think of the saints who have been uh, called and blessed in this life, but also the saints uh, gathered around the, the throne in heaven. So you can hear these all through the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
and even blessed are those who are reviled and persecuted for my name's sake, um, for their reward will be great uh, in heaven. So we see this, um, the ways in which the saints of God, uh, which is really um, all people who have been baptized uh, uh, into uh, Christ's kingdom, um, are living a double reality, blessed right now, and blessed right now because of the hope they have of being gathered uh, around the throne of, of Christ with all the saints in heaven. Um, a while ago, I guess a few years ago now, uh, Amy and I uh, had the great treat of worshiping uh, at All Saints uh, Church uh, in Suwannee, Tennessee. We were down at the School of Theology for a couple of weeks of continuing education and um, oh, we got to sit in the pews together without leading worship. How wonderful is that? Sometimes it's, sometimes it really is wonderful. Uh, and it was, a, it was a beautiful service. The liturgy was nice, the choir was lovely, and um, the sermon was very good. Sort of all the things one hopes for on All Saints Sunday. Um, in that, on that day, you know, when we pray in the collect that uh, um, we would be knit together, uh, uh, all, all God's saints knit together, and then uh, we remember the, the hope of the ineffable joys that God uh, promises for those who love him. Um, so it was, it was a lovely service. And the closing hymn was A Mighty Fortress. And uh, I like to sing, but I'm, you know, eh, not so great. <laughs> so I'm singing along the best I can. Uh, but Amy uh, is next to me singing uh, this song, uh, this hymn that uh, she knows by heart. Uh, uh, many of you know that Amy's uh, dad was a Lutheran minister and great-grandfather was a Lutheran minister and great-grandfather was a Lutheran minister. So uh, she heard this hymn a lot. <laughs> Uh, so she knows it by heart. And I think about it probably, she probably heard this hymn before she could even talk, right? I'm sure she was um, cradled in her mother's arms going to services, uh, probably both at her dad's church and her grandfather's church because she was born up here in Canada where her grandfather was serving. Uh, and Luther, I, I love this about Luther. Luther says that uh, God's word pulsing even in infants' ears creates faith, uh, that is, trust in God's promises. And I, I believe that. I, I believe uh, that is true, and I can picture the way in which this hymn pulsed into Amy's tiny ears, uh, creating a trust in God's promises. Um, and so we're singing, and I'm thinking, oh, uh, Amy's parents are, are dead now. They died way too young of cancer. Uh, of course, her grandparents are gone, and I think, oh, they would be so proud of her. You know, what a, what a good priest she is, what a gracious person she is. Um, and then I think we're singing along, and, and in Luther's uh, wonderful hymn, we say, let good and kindred, kindred go, this mortal life also, the body they may kill, uh, God's truth abideth still. And I think it's not right to say that, you know, they would, they would be proud of her. It's All Saints Day. They are proud of her. And in that service I got the sense of um, being surrounded by, you know, that great cloud of witnesses, being surrounded by all the saints who glorify God forever in heaven. Somehow in our worship when we join with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we participate together in the eternal praise of God. And I feel the presence of loved ones uh, amongst us. You know, loved ones who um, sang this hymn, uh, probably in German by heart, Ein Festeburg, now singing along with us, A Mighty Fortress. Uh, and I feel them jostling near uh, in the pews. And, um, and I tear up. And I can no longer sing, but that's okay. Um, I'm just happy to be there. I'm happy to be there on All Saints Sunday. I'm happy to be gathered 
uh, in the presence of the communion of saints. And I want to be there always, in the presence of God, in the company of saints, hearing the song of the saints around the throne, and hearing my wife's clear, strong song. Amen. All Saints Day, Prayers of Intercession. Watching for a new heaven, waiting for a new earth, we pray to the Lord, saying, O Lord our God, have mercy, and wipe away our tears. We pray for the Church, transform this broken body into a communion of saints, a company of the faithful, working for good in your world. O Lord, our God, have mercy, and wipe away our tears. We pray for the world. Destroy the shroud of death that is spread over the nations. Replace the rule of wealth and war with your realm of justice and peace. O Lord, have mercy and wipe away our tears. We pray for this community. May your home among us dwell with us in this place. Let it be a city of heavenly peace a place of refuge for all. O Lord our God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. We pray for loved ones. Soothe those who are suffering. Comfort those who mourn. Let us be glad and rejoice in the gift of your salvation. O Lord our God, have mercy and wipe away our tears. As you have sustained your saints through centuries of service, Keep us faithful, here and now, until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. I was strolling on a sandy beach In a dream that seemed so real The Lord was walking by my side His presence I could feel And then the scenes from my past Flashed by for me to see and in each scene were footprints that were walking close to me. Two sets of footprints along the sands of time. One set belonged to Jesus, but the other set was mine. Oh, what calm assurance, oh, what peace divine To know who owned the footprints that were walking close to mine Then the final scene passed by I failed to understand 
the footprints that walk close to me were no longer in the sand. It seemed to be when life for me was more than I could bear. I cried, O oh Lord, please tell me, how could you leave me there? Two sets of footprints along the sands of time. One set belonged to Jesus, but the other set was mine. Oh, what calm assurance, oh, what peace divine. To know who owned the footprints that were walking close to mine. The Lord then turned and spoke to me Compassion filled his eyes He said, my child, my precious child You just don't realize When life seemed more than you could bear And caused so much alarm that's when I had you cradled, cradled in my arms. Two sets of footprints along the sands of time. One set belonged to Jesus, but the other set was mine. Oh, what calm assurance, oh, what peace divine To know who owned the footprints that were walking close to mine Two sets of footprints along the sands of time one set belonged to Jesus, but the other set was mine. Oh, what calm assurance, oh, what peace divine, to know who owned the footprints that were walking close to mine. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.